every time you're doing something and it begins to frustrate you, ask yourself, okay, how can I simplify this? Because as soon as you simplify it, you're going to be able to enjoy what you're doing. Simplify your life by making God the main thing. Number three, do one thing at a time and enjoy it. Our span of concentration is not very long today. We have so many messages coming at us. Taking a drive down the highway is like driving through an encyclopedia. <laughs> and then we get in front of the TV. I mean, we can go through 75 channels in five minutes. <laughs> If you don't keep your mind on what you're doing, you're not even going to remember that you did it. You know, I may say something amazing in the next few minutes, and if you, in your mind, go somewhere to get your lunch, <laughs> then you're going to miss the amazing thing that I said. That's why recorded messages are so valuable. You could buy the recording of today's message, and you could probably listen to it six times, and every time you do, hear something you didn't hear before. Because all, you, all our mind has to do is wander off for one moment, and even though our body's there, if your mind is not there for all intent and purposes, you're not there. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. You know what anxiety is? It's spending your time today trying to figure out tomorrow. Amen. Amen. God gave the Israelites manna one day at a time. That could translate to the grace that we have to live each day. You don't need to try to figure out tomorrow. Every day has enough problems of its own. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Number four. Learn how to enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. Ooh, that makes things so simple. Enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. Be content and be satisfied. Life is complicated when you're always trying to be somewhere besides where you are. Well, I'll be glad when. I'll be glad when. I'll be glad when. Well, how about being glad now? You know, I'm, I'm really even trying to break the habit of saying that. Well, I'll be glad when the sun starts shining. You know, if I'm going to say anything, I'm trying to say, I'm really glad right now, but it's going to be nice when the sun shines too. I want to get out of that habit of saying, I'll be glad when, I'll be glad when, I'll be glad when. I want to be glad right now. This moment that I have right now is the most valuable moment in my life because for all I know, it could be my last one. I recall years ago when I used to get so mad when Dave and I first gotten married and I didn't have any common sense at all, no word in me, and I was mad more than I was glad. And one day I was mad at him all day and wouldn't talk to him, and I remember him looking at me and saying, wouldn't it be pathetic if Jesus came tonight and you had spent your last day on earth acting like this? That's a word, isn't it? Jesus died so we could enjoy our lives. Do you understand that? He shed his blood so we could have and enjoy our lives. And I believe it's our Christian duty to enjoy our lives. I don't know how anybody would ever want what we have if we don't look like we're enjoying it. There are so many sour-faced cranky, crabby, miserable Christians. <laughs> Enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. Let's look at Philippians 4, 11 and 12. Not that I'm implying that I was in any personal want, Paul said, for I have learned how to be content. And being content doesn't mean that you don't want change, but look what it says in the Amplified. Satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted, no matter what state I am in. I think that's beautiful. I've learned how to be content. Whether I'm abased or abounding, whether I'm getting my way or I'm not, 
whether the sun's shining or it's cloudy, I've learned how to be content. Whether my car starts after I've played golf or whether it doesn't, I've learned how to be content. Whether the hotel key that I have opens my door when the meeting's over and I can get in my hotel room, or whether I have to sit in the hall floor, I've learned to be content. <laughs> Come on. Hebrews 13, 5. This is an absolutely beautiful scripture. You're going to love this scripture. Let your character and your moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting something, but if you got a lust after it, to me, to lust means that if you don't have it, you can't be happy. And he says, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have, for God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, forsake you, nor let you down, relax my hold on you, exclamation mark, assuredly not, exclamation mark. So God's saying, you don't have to lose the joy of today and complicate your life trying to finagle around and get all these things that you think you have to have to make you happy. You can ask me for what you want and need and trust me that when the time is right, I'll bring it into your life in the right way. And now you are free to go ahead and enjoy this day and enjoy what you have. Perfectionists, you can enjoy things in their imperfect state. Controllers, you can learn how to be out of control and love it. <laughs> Trying to run the whole world is a big job. <laughs> Beware of greed. Greed leaves you in a place where you're never satisfied. The only thing greed ever says is more, 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 more. You know, when I had 50 people coming to my meetings, I thought if I could just have 100. When I got to 100, I thought if I could just have 200. And then I thought, oh, if I could just have 1,000, if just 1,000 people would come. And you know what? No number would have ever satisfied me had I not got satisfied in God. Now, thank God, the crowd doesn't control my joy. Amen? You can't let what you're seeing in front of you control your joy. Your joy has to be rooted in God. Be satisfied. Be content. And I know many of you are not content where you're at right now, and you need to listen to what I'm saying. But I can't help the way I feel. Well, you may not be able to help the way you feel, but you can help what you do. You can help how you act. And if you start to act right, your feelings will catch up with it. I'll tell you something you can do. I just had a great idea. You can stop complaining. Wow, wouldn't that be a novel idea? We could all stop complaining and our joy might increase. Enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. If you have a call on your life and you're waiting for God to do something, <laughs> don't forget to enjoy where you're at. Number five, trust. Just trust. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, I love it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind and lean not to your own understanding. You can simplify your life immediately by refusing to try to figure out things that God's not giving you the answer to. How many of you are figure-outers? <laughs> and what do you get from it? Confused. That's all. I finally got happy not knowing. I don't know. <laughs> People say sometimes, well, what are you going to do about your TV show if you get too old to travel? I don't know. <laughs> First of all, I probably won't get too old. I may have to cut it down some, but, you know, when I need to do something else, God will show me. 
Well, do you think the TV show is going to work if you're not teaching in front of a big crowd? Yeah, because God can anoint something else. He can anoint something else. I don't have to worry about it. Amen? And it's the anointing that breaks the yoke, not the place I'm at or the size crowd I'm preaching to. We worry about all kinds of stuff that we don't have the answers to, and God's not going to give us the answers. I mean, sometimes people come to work for us, and they'll be like, you know, 25, and say, well, you know, kind of, sort of, since the whole ministry revolves around you being able to do what you're doing, what kind of security are we going to have when you're no longer here? I'm like, I don't know. I guess you have to trust God like the rest of us. Oh, wouldn't that be a novel idea? Trust God. See, we want assurances and guarantees for everything. We want to have all of our ducks in a row and all of our check marks and all of our boxes. We want to have this all laid out and know what and when and how and where. Well, God don't work like that. Trust requires having unanswered questions. You got to, be, you got to get comfortable saying, I don't know. But I know the one who does know, and that's good enough. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Don't even think you're smart enough to run your own life. Wonder why I was drawn over here. Ooh, now I feel myself drifting over here. Don't even think you're smart enough to run your own life. God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I'm doing what I'm doing. I really don't. Me and one of the girls that traveled with me was talking about it this morning. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't know how in the world all this stuff is up and going. It must be God. <laughs> Whoops, we better give him the credit. I love John 11:40. Did I not tell you that if you would only believe, you would see the glory of God? Oh, what should I do? What, what should I do? What should I do? Believe. And what if you believe and things don't turn out the way you thought they would? Believe. And what if you've been believing for 20 years? Believe. <laughs> Because the minute you trust God, everything gets simple. Amen? Amen? Is anybody seeing how you complicate your own life? Amen. Am I getting my message across? Because I'm only on number five. <laughs> life may not change, but we can change. The moment you begin to feel frustrated when you're trying to do something, you're in the middle of something, stop and say, how can I simplify this? It's very simple. If Dave and I have had a little spat, what can I do? Go apologize. Well, what if I don't think I'm wrong? <laughs> Go apologize anyway. Who cares? Keep it simple. Being right is highly overrated. It doesn't really do all that much for you anyway. Amen? Amen? You know, I, I found out how to simplify life. Men want to be right. So I just let him think he's right, even when he's not. Hey, you know, here's two words that will calm things down in your house. You're right. And if you can't get that out, then say, well, you may be right. That'll even work sometimes. Come on. We argue about things that don't even make any sense. I finally figured out if I needed to be proven to be in the right, God could take care of that. Otherwise, it was just something that was a prideful thing in me that I didn't have to make a big issue out of. Woo, I'm enjoying my life more already. <laughs> Number six, let go of what lies behind. Woo, that'll simplify life, won't it? God says he'll give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
Beauty for ashes. But you know what? If you want the beauty, you got to give up the ashes. You can't drag the ashes of the past around with you all the time. No matter what you've done in the past, I want you to get over it today. Leave it. Do not take it out of this building with you. Well, Joyce, you don't know what I've done. Well, you don't know what I've done either. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away and all things become brand new. You say, well, Joyce, I've done some really bad things since I became a Christian. Well, his mercy is new every day. Every day, every day. His mercy is new every day. If your heart's sincere and you really love God and you're sorry for the things that you've done wrong, you do not have to suffer one more day in your heart over your past mistakes. Did you hear me? Not one more day. Not one more day. Not one more day. Paul said, one thing I do, it is my strongest desire, my greatest aspiration, forgetting what lies behind. Your future has no place for your past. Some of you are dragging so much stuff around with you, it's no wonder you're weighted down. You're dragging things 30 years old and 40 years old. You're hating people that hurt you that aren't even alive anymore. <laughs> Amen? Amen? It's time to get over it and go on. Get over it and go on. Stop talking about it. Stop rehearsing it. Stop thinking about it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. And I know that's sometimes a hard pill to swallow, but... <laughs> I walked in a store the other day, I forget where it was, just wandered in a store and some lady screamed and grabbed me, and then she, she, she started, I am powerful and not pitiful, I'm going to do it afraid. She was quoting everything that I say. But she had the one that was important to me. You can be pitiful or powerful, but you can't be both. I had to stop feeling sorry for myself. We all have to at some point. God's offering you a new life. Let go of what lies behind. It will greatly simplify your life. Number seven, don't make mountains out of molehills. Mm, 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 mm. Pick your battles wisely. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting 200 things every day. Know what really matters. Learn how to just let, let things go if you can. Now, I don't mean let them go to where they pile up and become a problem. I believe in confrontation and dealing with issues. But I can tell you, there are so many things that we make a huge issue out of that are just not important at all when all is said and done. I mean, you've heard my stories. Dave and I, in the past, we'd argue about who an actor was on TV well, that's so-and-so. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yes, 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 yes. Stay up till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning waiting for the credits to roll so we could just prove who was right. <laughs> Dave thought every actor was Henry Fonda. I got so tired of Henry Fonda. <laughs> and then I, I finally got it. You know, it was like the Lord put on my heart, what difference does it make? If he dies and comes home to be with me, thinking that's Henry Fonda, just let it go. I mean, I got to the point where if he thought a woman was Henry Fonda, I said, yep, probably is. Yes, I'm exaggerating. Dave's down here just going. He tells me I exaggerate. I'm just making a creative point. He laughs at me about the barbecue story. He said, I'm surprised by now you haven't added buying a new house because every time I tell it, I, I enhance on it a little bit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. God is so good. Don't let small-mindedness rule your spirit. Amen? 
Pick your battles wisely. Don't give your attention to something that's really not even worth your attention. Not going there. Well, I've learned that one. Not going there. Been there, done that. Didn't like the trip. Not going there. <laughs> not going there. Anger, upset, and frustration and aggravation take your energy. Unless you've got energy to waste, the moment you feel frustrated, come on, I want you to remember this. The moment you feel frustrated, what are you going to do? Ask myself, how can I simplify this? What can I do in this situation to maintain my joy? A lot of times God just tells me, change your attitude. You know, really just a little attitude adjustment sometimes just simplifies something and makes it beautiful. Keep life as simple as possible and you'll enjoy it so much more. Number eight, we're going to make it. <laughs> you'll love this one, clean out the clutter. I think complicated surroundings make me feel suffocated. Some of you have some pretty things in your house, but you've got so many of them, nobody can see anything. I finally figured that out. I love pretty things, but you know, if you have too many of them sitting around, you don't see any of it. Uh-oh, I got some people sticking their head under their seats. Now, I know that people, some people are real sentimental. I don't happen to be that way, so you have to excuse me if I'm not where you're at. But one of the girls that travels with me is very sentimental, and she said this morning, I still have all my baby's teeth. <laughs> and I said, your baby's teeth? <laughs> I do well to remember mine's birthdays. Some of them is like, now, how old are you, and when were you born? <laughs> Sometimes the way they've acted, I think, do you really belong to me? No. <laughs> Dave likes to keep stuff, man, and I mean, he's like, he collects bags. He likes paper bags and plastic bags and <laughs> laundry bags and plastic bags and bags and bags. He said, you never know when we're going to need that. Sure enough, every once in a while, I'll need a bag. And he'll say, aha, see, I told you. I told you you were going to need that bag. No, we won't even go into what all Dave has. <laughs> Keep your surroundings organized and clutter-free. Clutter are things you're not using that are just taking up space, if you need me to explain it. <laughs> now, there's one lady down here in the front row having an experience. I mean, she's, <laughs> she's having a God moment over here. <laughs> Let me tell you what to do with things. You ready? Put them away, throw them away, or give them away. <laughs> Put them away, throw them away, or give them away. You know, we've had fun today, but I think that you've also gotten the lesson. And I just want to, I want to bring this back around full circle and just tell you that I really do believe that it is extremely important to the cause of God, to the cause of Christ in the earth, that we enjoy our lives. Because I really do believe that the world needs to see a happy church. They need to see us having some of the same issues and situations they do, but having them with joy. Okay, you don't have to have a perfect marriage to enjoy the person you're married to. You don't have to have the perfect place to live to enjoy where you live. If you want to believe God for something else, that's great, but enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. Appreciate everything that God has given you. Be glad about the spiritual growth that you've gotten so far. Don't be in a bad mood every day because you're not where you want to be yet. Make some decisions today. Jesus said the thief comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. And I'd like to just say, I believe the devil comes to kill your joy, to steal your joy, and to destroy your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When Satan does things that hurt you, 
He's not after your stuff. He don't care about having your stuff. He wants your joy. If he can take your joy, he takes your strength. But Jesus said, I came. Thank God he came. I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Simplify, 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 because God never intended for life to be complicated. Well, if you feel like that your life is just too complicated, today can be the day that you begin to simplify it. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. If you'll go to the Lord, He'll begin to show you things that you can change in your life in order to simplify it. Nancy is two years old, but when she was about three months old, something fell on her head and, and the injury basically stunted all of her development and her growth from that point forward. And so she hasn't really been able to, to develop like a normal child since that time. But because of our medical clinics here, she's come back the last two days and they've been able to, to get her the medicines that she needs. They've been able to teach the family how to work with uh, Nancy on, on physical therapy and how to, to, to teach her and train her so that there's a very, very good chance that with these medicines and with you know, the physical therapy that she'll walk someday and that she'll be able to overcome this injury. Nancy's parents have brought her two days in a row because they love her so much and they want her to get the help she needs. On their behalf, as a parent, we just thank you that we can come and help beautiful children like Nancy. Hi, sweetie. You are a beautiful girl. Yes, you are. 